Yes. You are my God, I will not fear. Come on. <laughs> I refuse to be moved. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And literally the first thing was BBC introducing was like we want this song to be played. I'm like, you guys you guys know this song is about Jesus. <laughs> you guys know that the song is called Amen. It's not, you know. I realized that the more you lean into who God has created you to be, all your quirks, all your little insecurities, everything that makes you you is exactly what God wants to use to bless somebody else. So five yeah. days after my audition, and I crashed. I had like I had a big episode of depression. I couldn't get up from work. I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. I had anxiety. I had to, you know, it, was a, it was like a massive dip. And I think anybody that's on the, on the, on the, that's watching, that's interested in going on a show like that, so understand that there's that, you need to prepare mentally for that part because that's the part nobody talks about. For our special guest for this evening, on the bounce back with Hannah Ola. Um, his name is Zion Music. You may have seen him on The Voice. He was on um, Team Tom. You know, Tom Tom Jones's, Sir Tom Jones's um, team. And um, he's here. He's here. <laughs> oh, my word. Honestly, Zion. I am, I am a fan. I am just out here just like, wow. This is happening. Wow. This is happening. I am such a fan. I love what you do. I've just been, I've been watching from in the background, just been, wow. just been looking at all the amazing things that you've been doing, your nominations, your, um, it's AGMA nominations. I remember the time, like, honestly, wow. 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 I, do you just, know what? This is, I'm really humbled because I love your music. Oh, I think you, you, I think you are so immensely gifted. I, I, thank I, you. I, I I have all the time in the world for you. I think you're you're so original and so authentic. And Thank you. I, I, you know, so when in your bio when you talked, there was that piece about the identity. Yeah. Um, I really want to talk about that because sure. your your music is so is so unique it's oh, like you. you know that there's there's obviously you hear pop you hear soul you hear all these different things but with the zion standpoint <laughs> uh, you know which is which is remarkable which is a very people employ people to to, to do that to be, stuff yeah. for them yeah. and, he, and and that must have come as a result of a journey absolutely and Absolutely. you know, and so I want to hear about that. Where does that sound come from? Was it? <sighs> yeah, tell me. Where does that sound? So I come think from? the best way I can describe it is this. So I've been leading worship in church for uh, in, since two thousand. I, I really only started singing properly in two thousand and eight. I used to. I never thought it was something I could do. Nobody in my family sings, so there was wow. no. Like, there was no. Um, you know, like when you grow up in a musical family, you think, okay, I can just. Nobody in my family sings, so. I just, wow. I guess, picked it up on the way. But yeah, I started, sing, I started leading worship in my church shortly because I used to play drums and then I moved on to the choir because my choir yeah. leader heard me singing. Yeah. Like, Wait, you need to <laughs> join yeah. the, the, the choir. And then I started singing and I've I, I been leading worship and it's, and it's been amazing. My church is predominantly Nigerian, predominantly black. Yeah. And so you tailor the music and the worship to essentially the audience even though you don't try to play to the audience you have to yeah. kind of tailor it to what people know yeah. so i you know i would sing the you know the sinatches the nakano mm -hmm. basi and mm -hmm. the don Murin and the john you know john mcclerkin and all of them and it's powerful but what i found was every the kind of songs that i was getting the kind of songs that were coming naturally to me were not songs that i could sing or play in church so i felt very disconnected for a long time I'm, I'm telling you for a long time i felt like the songs god was giving me you know i thought a lot of my songs used to come after worship so after i leave worship i went someone is doing the prayers for the nation and da, 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 i'm <laughs> on my keyboard and melodies come and then over time i work on it and that's how i'd be right i was writing songs back then hmm. so it took a while for me to kind of really accept that i, I forgot to really help me to understand that okay do you know what this this sound mm -hmm. this um, I guess we we'll call it alternative. This alternative <laughs> sound is there for a reason, and mm. because God likes variety, and there yeah, is variety of people that you can reach with that music. 
Mm. There are people that are yearning for that music, so don't stifle yourself. That's what the identity comes into place. Because for a long time, I felt like I had to play a, a particular character in mm. church to fit the mold and to to um, to sound like this person or that person. Mm -hmm. But I realized that my love for them isn't doesn't mean I have to copy their sound. And mm. what's what I just needed to find me and find the the style of music that I felt work for me and to god be the glory it's been blowing my mind because i released my first thing in 2017 obviously like you know mm -hmm. and literally the first thing was bbc introducing was like we want this song to be played i'm like you guys <laughs> you guys know this song is about jesus <laughs> you guys know that this song is called amen it's not you know this is do you know what I mean? it's not there was no way no, like, I, was, I wasn't hiding my christianity i wasn't hiding who i was Mm -hmm. And BBC introduced in Manchester were like, yeah, absolutely, we want, we love to um, playlist the song, and then the journey just carried like that. So I realized that the more you lean into who God has created you to be, all your quirks, all your little insecurities, everything that makes you you, is exactly what God wants to use to bless somebody else. So yeah, Zion is a pastor's kid. Not that that you know means much these days yeah. because all kinds of the things, but. Mum has clearly, you know, mum's influence is clear. You are a a a deep yeah. individual. There is there is definitely a groundedness there. And for you to still have it all together after the voice. So yeah. that we're getting into the voice now. You you were on you were on national TV. You were in Team <laughs> Tom. Yeah. Firstly, tell us tell us how did you just in brief, how did you get in? So I auditioned like everyone else. Um, I because I, I I never I was never gonna go on a TV show or competition like that because I don't do competitions. I just I like you know people that just win things or just like I, I it's never been my case. Yeah. So I don't win at raffles at Christmas raffles. I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just never a thing for me. But I obviously I've known about X Factor. I've known about the boys. I've known about Britain's Got Talent for many years. But I just didn't feel like it was something I could do. And then we had someone from. The competition was like, you've seen your music, I would like you to come. And I was like, okay. Wow. So I auditioned like everybody else, went out to London, auditioned, and yeah, they, the response was great. Mm -hmm. um, there was, there's a, there's a pre-audition before the actual main audition okay, that everyone gets to see. And the response was great. I, it was received really well. They want me for me, so mm. why not? And at the end of the day, what's the, what's the worst thing that happened? Like, I also was thinking... This whole thing is a competition. This thing and thing that I said I'm doing, I might just delude myself because I got to a point I was really low because it was like oh, things were music was going, it was okay, but it was just stagnant. I felt really low. I felt really down because I just felt like I should be progressing and nothing was really happening. And I was like, this thing and thing that I'm doing, I'm actually good or I might delude myself and thinking that I'm actually good at it. So I had to. It was that mindset of okay, go and actually challenge yourself. Pick up, mm. take this challenge. You know, in front of these four incredible, established, mm. worldwide, sensational, you know, artists in their own right, and the world, really, mm. and go for it. And so I was like, yeah, why not? So I went for it, auditioned, and th <sighs> thankfully the story is, is as is right mm. now. I got through, and the journey was just been, it's been incredible. Like, I've had to, I managed to show me. I think that was the important things. Like, what you see there is what you see. There was no... There's no, I wasn't trying to, there's nothing, there's nothing that's not true, you know, when I cried, I cried because I was like, did this really happen, you know, and then when I, you know, I sang from a place of truth and honesty and I just, I presented myself as authentic as I can because I was like, if millions of people are going to see this, I don't want them to fall in love with a fake version of me, so let them like me for me so that if they're staying, they're staying for me, do you know what I mean? So it was a great experience, it was a challenge and I love the challenge, Yeah. Oh, what, what was yes. it like? What was it like being on that stage, especially like um, when you now knew you were on Team Tom and it was proper, like game on? You've got yes. not only your expectations for you, but for your team captain. Yes, yes. Talk to me about that. So I absolutely. Um, I think being on the show for me, you have to understand. I've gone from singing in church, where it's like any little thing you do is still is accepted. Like people, people. You know for a fact that people that can't sing sing in church and people applaud them <laughs> to support them, right? So, like, 
in because it's not about the singing. In some churches, church. some churches. Oh really? I read. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> no, I, I cannot go to those churches because it's not real. Wow. But like you know, for me, so I understand that in church the, fo the focus is worship and it's not about oh singing and riffing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I've come from that context of my own bubble of you know. 10 plus years of leading worship and doing mm. the festival of life and all these different things mm. to being in a place where you are literally judged for your singing. Mm. You are literally only there because they have come to hear you. Like they can't see you. They're, t they're back to turn to you. Yeah. So you're able to, you're going on there and it's, you're, you're literally being judged by your singing. So mm. it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like in my mind, I'm thinking, I mean, offer the whole thing because nobody turned for a long time and I was singing and on my, my mm. audition, I had a cold, I had tonsillitis. Mm. So I had to mm. power through all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my audition well, had tonsillitis. Wow. So I was even like, so wait, the two, like four days before my audition, when we did rehearsal, like my voice was fine. The recording was, I was like, ah, if I, for me, I listened, I was like, wow, <laughs> you know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like the the the, the production team everyone there was everyone was giving a round of applause like i was like i felt like wow i had to step out of my bubble to come into a space where these are professional people that work in the music industry that are like giving me applause and saying i'm what i'm what i'm doing is good that for me was like okay so this insecurity that you're having thinking that you're not good enough is actually just mm. you know self-sabotage so i got out of that mindset comes the day I have tonsillitis and I'm saying and my voice is really is hurting and da, 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 da. they're not turning. I was like, yeah, give me, give me, buy me. I left my house. Who begged me? Because it's not cover TV. They would not say, you carried yourself to TV and they never talk. And, you know, there was that fear. Yeah, and then wow. when the whole thing happened, when Tom, um, Tom Jones turned around and the tears came from, from that mindset. You can understand why the tears came now because I was coming from a place of like, I, I felt like the people that were for me were didn't really see or value me so to come into a place where he doesn't tom jones doesn't know me doesn't have to care doesn't have to <gasps> doesn't have to turn this is someone that's been in this for 60 years 60 dec six decades of doing music touring the world that is literally his job is to be able to critique and understand good music to tell me you're not good at what you do you are great at what you do those moments for me was like okay so i was just in my own head this is just imposter syndrome okay, I actually have something to offer. It really reaffirmed me. So all through the process, it was a case of, I was thinking, oh my God, my parents were on the side, my mom was on the side, my brother was on the side, I don't want to disappoint them. You know, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, my, my actual community, of church, church community, my friends, mm -hmm. people that know me, oh God, I don't want to disappoint them. All that kind of stuff. I think all of that. And I think through the entire journey of the, of the show, it's constantly coming to that place of, I'm nervous, um, am I good enough? Do I have what it oh, takes? Wow. But powering through that so that to, to, to the point where I became more comfortable and I, I, I'm who I am now because I went through that process. Like, I don't really need anybody to tell me that I'm good because, first of all, God already told me that. I know I'm good. But I've been affirmed in, by professionals. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? And now I'm comfortable and content in what I have to offer. I know that there are people who are out there who want that. So it was up and down. It was it was it was a lot. The nerves gets to you. The all the prep, all the it's it really does. Do, it gets to your mind. At yeah, it, it does a lot. Well, I can see lot. you. I can see you journeying back. Even as I'm thinking speaking. about it, I'm just like, oh, there oh was some, my, there were some moments.